Boys and girls, today we are going to be learning about ancient Greek theater. Now, the ancient Greeks were the first people to have formal theater. They started having plays, as we think of them, around 600 years before the Lord was born. They started as part of a festival for the Greek god Dionysus. And some of the traditions that the ancient Greeks did in their theater, we still see in our theaters and our entertainments today. Let's start by looking at the actual theaters themselves. Now, at the beginning, when theater was first starting, the theaters were made of wood and they were somewhat portable, but eventually they got to be made of stone and we still have today theaters that were made by the ancient Greeks. They look a lot like this. Now, if you look at this picture of an ancient Greek theater, you might notice it reminds you of something. See the things that look like stairs? Those are actually seats. If you look really carefully, you can see some people on those stairs or seats to give you a sense of what the size is. When I look at a thing like that, it reminds me a little bit of stadium seating. Like if you go to a sporting event, like a baseball game or a football game, often the seats will look a little bit like that. And that first came from ancient Greeks and was then copied by the ancient Romans. We're gonna use this picture to learn about the different parts or sections of a Greek theater. Now the seats here were called the theatron and you can see that we got the word theater from that word. The theatron is where the audience would have sat. Originally, the priest of Dionysus would have sat right around there, but eventually the theater was less about worship and more about entertainment. At the bottom here is the orchestra. I know you've heard that word before. You can see from the picture, even though I wrote the word orchestra over them, how small the people were in that orchestra. That is where the actors would stand and that's where they would perform. And behind them is the skein. We get the word scene or scenery from that word. And the skein is no longer there because they were mostly made of wood. The skein was a little bit like a really big wall and they would paint the scenery on it. The actors would also go behind it so they could change costumes, they could change roles and come back out again. So those are the three main parts of the actual theater itself. So if you were an ancient Greek going to the theater, what would you watch? Well, the ancient Greeks had three different types of plays that they would go and see. They would see comedy, which is represented in this mask, and the comedy was usually something funny, like we think of comedies today. You could go see a tragedy, and you can see the tragedy, the sad mask there as well. Tragedy was usually, like it sounds, something sad. Often it was about the downfall of a hero. The story of Orpheus is a really good example of what a tragedy would have been like. The third type of play is called a satire, and they would have a mythical creature called a satyr in it, and they were kind of making fun of serious plays. The satyr was often a troublemaker and would ha have people make poor decisions, which ended up being kind of silly. So those are the three types of plays that you might have seen. We actually still have today many plays that were written by ancient Greek playwrights, such as Euripides or Sophocles. So if you were an ancient Greek person going to a performance, who would you see performing? Well, you would see the actors performing. Now, in ancient Greece, actors were only men. This is actually not unusual for ancient cultures to have actors only be allowed to be men. So the men would play all the parts in the play. And you can see, if you look carefully at these men, they are wearing masks. And the actors would wear masks and that helped them to change characters quickly. So they'd have one mask to play one part, they'd run behind the scene, come back out again with a different mask on for a different part. So a lot of actors were playing many, many parts in ancient Greek places. plays. You can see the bottom picture is from a modern interpretation of an ancient Greek play because there's more than three actors there. And as I mentioned, the actors would be wearing masks. Here are some examples of what we think the ancient Greek masks look like. Now, the actual ancient Greek masks were made of things like leather or fabric or cork, 
and those materials don't last very well. We don't actually have any masks from there, but we have an idea of what they looked like. Now, if you look at these masks, they look a little bit unusual. I want you to notice a few things. First of all, they all have a really wide mouth. That was because the actor had to speak through there and be heard. So it had a hole for their voice to come out of, and it also served a little bit like a megaphone. So it would make their voice a little bit louder because did you see how big those theaters were? Their voices had to project really far. They also have really exaggerated features. So you can see their eyes are very wide. That's because the mask had to be visible from very far away. It also meant that those actors could change quickly. All they had to do was take off one mask and put on another one. So every performance would be done in a mask. Another important aspect of Greek theater was the Greek chorus. Now, the Greek chorus was separate from the three main actors, the one that played the parts in the story. Here is what the Greek chorus did. They helped to explain the story. They were kind of all seeing and all knowing and they would talk about what was happening. It reminds me a little bit of something like a narrator in the play. They were the voice of reason. If someone was making a bad decision, they would say things like, that was a really bad idea. Or if someone made a mistake because they didn't know something, the chorus would say, they just made a mistake because they didn't know something. The Greek playwrights were a little better than I am, so they would use better words. So we actually still use this concept of a chorus today. If you go to a play that's like a musical, there's often a chorus, which is not the main characters, but they help to tell the story. They help move the plot forward. So just like many aspects of ancient Greece, the chorus we still use today. Some of those chorus members look a little familiar. So important things about ancient Greek theater. Think about if any of these things remind you of how we do things today. Large arenas where lots of people can gather together to watch the same event. Different genres, comedy, tragedy, satire. Professional actors whose job it is to portray these roles. A chorus whose job it is to support the actors and explain the play. And the use of masks. Lots of these aspects of Greek theater are still around today.